Shalom. First of all, I want to start out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, from the name Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during these times to come. <clears throat> I was having one of those, you know, times in the day when you seem as though everything is going wrong. And, of course, thanks coming to this truth, I understand that there's going to be times when the Lord allows Satan, you know, to get on your nerves. But that's, you got to look at it as, you know, how Job was in the situation when Satan was allowed to touch his resources and as well touch his, um, his body but he wasn't able to you know kill him because the Lord told him that don't take it told him not to take it that far because we understand like I said that Satan actually answers to the Heavenly Father and his son Yahweh Shai you can read that in the book of Job um, in the first and second chapter it talks about how Satan Came in, came in and the Heavenly Father asked, where are you coming from? So, how they talk about in Christianity, etc., these false doctrines, Satan and the, and the Lord is not fighting against each other. Satan is in order, and like I said, does what the Heavenly Father and his son, Yahweh Shah, tells him to do. But, I also keep in mind, as we all must keep in mind, the ones that's striving for this truth and to death, as the scriptures say, that things are going to get worse. So the little things that go on in our life, we got to just kind of sort of ignore them because ultimately these are small things compared to what we're going to eventually have to face. So <laughs> I'm going to um, go start off with 2nd Edges, chapter 7, and verse. I'm going to start at verse six, 56. It reads, For while we live and commit iniquity, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Because, you know, we come back every third and fourth generation, and when we die, we go into the spirit world, and then when we come back, we come back into the flesh to be judged. So that explains why, you know, certain things happen to a newborn baby, a kid, a teenager, or even an adult, because for the most part in our past, we understood that like I said, we reincarnation is real more than today's time when a lot of people don't believe in it. But us, the ones that believe in this truth, we understand that reincarnation is real. I'm going to continue on. Then answer he me and said, this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the things that I say. For this is the life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him, no, nor me which have spoken unto them. And a lot of our people, they don't believe the words that we speak. And I'm talking about specifically from the men, the elders and the apostles of the great millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine when we out there on the highways and the byways preaching this truth majority of our people don't want to listen so ultimately they're going to be they're, they're born in vain made to be destroyed but as we know the good thing about two thirds of the two thirds of our people that is, are going to be destroyed along with the heathen they're going to come back in the kingdom through the loins of an elect person that's delivered out of the destruction to come. When America is spiritually called Egypt, Babylon the Great, 
Sodom, etc., is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles that's going to be shot over here by Russia and them other European countries. A lot of our people are going to have to taste them missiles that lake of fire when that time comes. That's why we pray that we're the elect that's going to be delivered, of the elect of the Lord's people, the Israelites, which they consist of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not heathen because their father's sea line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. But I'm going to finish off in verse 61. It reads that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. But I'm going to jump back, jump up to verse 18 in 2nd Edges, the 7th chapter. It reads, Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the wide. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wide. So ultimately, we're going to all go through the trials and tribulations, especially that hour of temptation. But the righteous, we're presenting our body as a living sacrifice now. We're putting off this world. We're losing our life in this world now while before all hell breaks loose because we're following after Yahweh Shah. And just like the world, did the world then accept Yahweh Shah, they're not going to accept us because they want to, this whole, this world mostly lies in wickedness and darkness. And the, Yahweh Shah coming was basically the light and that light shines forth through the men of the Lord that preach this truth. A lot of people are not going to agree with the stuff that we say. And like I said, and a lot of, and we're not going to conform to the ways of this wicked society because we understand that that brings forth death. But like I said, we're losing our life, like I said, as far as in putting off the wicked ways of this world for the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh but the two-thirds of our people that's not going to receive this truth are going to still go through trials and tribulations as well. Which, like I said, the straight things yet should not see the wide. And that wide is, you know, the kingdom of heaven. But like I said, ultimately, they're going to be born again, but they're going to have to go through the second death, which, like I said, is that lake of fire, the missus. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God and none that have understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. And like I said, because they're not going to receive this truth. And the Lord speaks through his men, his servants, the prophets. Like it says in Amos 3 and verse 7, it, it reads that, roughly paraphrased, that the Lord will do nothing as he really revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So that's why we understand that and that when we come into this truth, we have a a big portion of work to do because we have to feed the flock. And like the scriptures say that if you fall out of this truth after knowing the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, then you 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 was better off not knowing the truth than to receive it and basically go back into this wicked world. So with that being said, I'm gonna grab Luke chapter twelve. And I'm going to start at verse 48. This is how we're speaking. It reads, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So the point is that it says, For unto whomsoever much is given him, should be much required. So like I said, we have a lot of work that we got to do. We got this truth. We got to teach this truth. We can't hide our candle under, you know, under a blanket. We got to use our talent. So much is required for the ones that receive this truth. Like Yahweh Shah said, and I believe it's um, John 
verse 21, chapter 21, start at the 15th verse, it reads, Yahweh Shah speaking to Peter, saying that if you if you love me, feed my lamb. Because ultimately, two thirds of our people, the men, two thirds men of our people are not thinking about feeding the lambs this truth. And then we also got people amongst Israel that so-called leaders that's not feeding our people with the true doctrine. Ultimately, it's going to lead to their destruction as well. Like the scriptures say, judgment must start at the house of Israel. But I'm going to go from there to James chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 2 because, like I said, the point of the lesson is that we got to understand that this is the condition of the battle and we're going to go through certain things. So when life sucks, you know, you just got to, like Lil Wayne said in one of his songs, you got to just enjoy the head. It reads, my brethren, count it all joy when, if I, if I didn't say James chapter 1 verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So when we go through these temptations, you know that tries like when demons hop on these people in the world and they try to tempt you to, you know, get out of character, you got to understand that this is the condition of the battle and Satan is going to going to pick with you sometimes. But you got to understand, like one of my main scriptures I like to um, speak on is Proverbs 20 and 24. It reads, man's goings are the Lord. Who can understand their own way, roughly paraphrasing. You got to understand that everything is at the will of Yahweh, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And as we know, all things were given to his son, Yahweh Shai. But like I said, it ultimately boils down to it's what's in the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Because like, like I said, the scriptures say, man's going to the Lord. So whatever anybody or anything does, it leads to, it all leads back to what's in the will of the Heavenly Father. And it, of course, we got to understand that. But us in the flesh, we sometimes can forget that. But I'm going to go from there to Romans chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 1. It reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And yeah, <laughs> ultimately, us going through these trials and tribulations and, you know, the troubles that we deal with in this world is building up our patience. And, you know, patience means to suffer. Because, like I said, we're going through the fire now. We're entering at the straight gate now so that when all hell breaks loose, we can be like, man, I done dealt with all this stuff, so it ain't nothing to go through with which what's going to go on. But ultimately, we know it's up to Yahweh Hashem Yahshua to put that spirit on you to feel that way. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. So, yeah, like I said, we got to understand that everything that we go through is helping us increase our faith and our patience. And we understand that we waiting for our Lord Yahweh Shah to return because like the scripture said, Micah 2 and 10, this is not our rest. Arise and depart, this is not to rest. It's polluted, roughly paraphrasing. So we got to understand that this is, like I said, the condition of the battle. But I'm going to go from there to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Start at 12. It reads, Beloved, think it not strange concerning a fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. So it's not going to be strange to us because we understand this is the condition of the battle. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of 
Yahweh Shah Hamashiach suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, he may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Like I said, a lot of our people are not going to believe on this truth. They're not going to believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh But we glorify in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh because we understand the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah went through for the nation of Israel. But more, 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 many are not going to um, understand it. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a bitty body in other man's matters. Because we're not going to we're not trying to receive a corruptible crown. We're trying to get an incorruptible crown. Yet, if any man suffer as a as a Christian, which of course we're not talking about the Christianity that they push in this world. This is talking about the true believers of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Let him not be ashamed, but let him glory, glorify God on his behalf. The point is in general kind of made, but like I said, I'm going to just grab a couple more um, precepts because this is the condition of the battle when life sucks, you know, you just got to push through and have patience and wait for your hot bashim Shah to get you through it. Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 6, it reads, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son, every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which have correct, which correct us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in suggestion to the father of spirits and live? And the father of spirits is the heavenly father Yahweh. And a lot of people don't have to fear that fear the Lord. And that's what's going to change. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but here for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Because like I said, this is just a test for us to, you know, increase our patience and faith, etc. Now, no chastening, chastening for the present seemed to be joyous. Like I said, it can suck sometimes, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yieldeth a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So yeah, when it's like I said, like Lil Wayne said in the song, when life sucks, you know, you just gotta sit back and enjoy the head. Because ultimately you know that if you don't receive it in the sight of your high bar shimmy shy, it's ultimately gonna be to your benefit the things that you go to go through, whether it be good or bad in your opinion. But I'm going to go from there to Zechariah chapter 13, and I'm going to start at verse 8. Because, like I said in the beginning, two-thirds of our people are not going to understand why they're going through the trials and tribulation. They also ultimately going to have to suffer death by pain. It reads, And it should come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts there should be cut off and die, but the third shall be left there. And I'm going to start grab verse 9. Like I said, basically, when life sucks, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. That's the one third, the one that's going to be delivered. They shall call on my name, the true names, Yahabashim Yahushua, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Man. But this is my, I'm going to grab this last scripture, because this is what. We pray. We pray that Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is dealing with us when that hour of temptation comes, when all hell breaks loose. Because those are the only ones that's going to be able to endure it. Revelation 3 and verse 10 If Yahweh Shah speaking, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that our temptation is going to include that micro RFID C hip that these devils are going to try to push and deceive and cause everyone to take. But only the ones that the Lord 
I put the spirit on that he keeps the that he um keep from the hour of temptation is going to have the spirit to not take it. Verse 11, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And that's that incorruptible crown. crown. That crown that the ones that's, that um, endure to the end are going to receive when our Lord Yahweh Shai returns and deliver the elect. When the heavenly father, Yahweh, gives him the say so to do so. But that's all I got. Like I said, I just came up with that through the spirit because sometimes life sucks. So you just got to, you know, like I to keep saying, like Lil Wayne's song. said in song, you got to just enjoy the head and just wait till it's over with. But call Haloim La, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honor style apostles and elders, a great millstone, teaching well with truth and sincerity, and salutations to the elect. Shalom.